what's going on everyone, Kenan here, and you know what, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how I spend my relaxation time. Kate's not home, the kids are out, it's just going to be us guys and you and of course Tom holding the camera, but I want to show you what my typical afternoon looks like, and basically, I just chill out with the animals. We're going to go on a bit of a tour and you're going to be up to date with how Camp Cannon looks now, and I'm also going to let you in on a few little things that I'm going to be doing with the animals. I guess they're big things but I'm gonna want your help in the comments, okay? So make sure you guys comment below because this tour is gonna be interactive. It's Camp Kenny. Ah, this is where I like to start. Actually, this is kind of where I start when I show people around the house when I have visitors. Uh, it's the radiated tortoises. I just threw some of the uh, tortoise di diet out, the good old Missouri tortoise diet, a little snack for these guys. It's late afternoon right now when we're filming this video, and this is my absolute favorite time to hang out here at the camp. Now, one of the things I've recently done that made my life so much easier is I got these canisters here, these nice containers. They're very good. Uh, you can get them at any pet supply company. But what I've done is now I'm keeping the tortoise food right out here. So this way I don't have to lug a lot of buckets around with me all over the in, uh, entire camp. I just kind of just scoop them out, give them three scoops of this, they get their snack, and it's cut down on my workload, you know? And it's really fun to walk around in here. You guys remember these two? Hey, Tom, you remember building this cage? I do. You do, I, took, I know. It took some time. It took some time, but it's still standing. Yeah, it let's, looks good. Let's peek in and see what the rhino iguanas are doing right now, the little guys. So, uh, now these guys are usually lunatics. They still haven't tamed up. It's going to take a little bit more work. Oh, look, they're sleeping on their heating pad. Very, very cool. So they're going to bed tonight, but they're getting bigger. Uh, and I'm amazed they aren't freaking out when I open this container. So that's pretty good. This is their hide box. So I like to kind of walk around the camp at this time because it's going to get dark soon. And what's neat is you get to see everybody and make sure everyone's healthy. So let's keep moving along. Yes, come on over here, guys. Check this out. I'm going to take you on the same route that I take everyone else. So we start with the radiated and then we move. But as you're going to find out in this video, I sense change coming to Camp Kennan. You guys know that I want to do the crocodilians. You guys know that I have big plans. And I got to start thinking about what the camp is going to look like in the future. And so basically, guys, I'm thinking of moving tortoises around. We just built this whole new enclosure. We've made it bigger. You guys know that I did the Sophia's Pond back in December. Well, you remember for the longest time, this barrier was not built. So I finally got off my butt last week and I went all the way around and I finished this enclosure. Now, what I'm doing, oh, I made a gate too. How then, far into those posts? Oh, these posts go in far. These go in far. These go in about like, oh, probably three foot, maybe two and a half foot because they're, they have weight on them with this right. gate. But what about the rest of them? No, these? the rest, here's what I did with this, guys. So you can see there's some short posts here. Every few posts, I took a full-size one. Uh, they're six-foot posts. I cut them in half. I sink them down about two, a foot and a half, and these act as the real braces. The taller ones are braced, and then once I nail, or rather staple, the welded wire here, the vinyl-coated wire, it actually makes all the small ones that aren't sunk in as deep, it makes them rigid and it oh, holds them idea. together. So I did it that way because it saved me on having to dig, dig, dig well, real deep. How long did this all take? To be honest, I got really motivated, Tom, and it took me, I did one day where I sunk all of the posts, then I took a break. You don't want to kill yourself. And then I took the um, vinyl coated wire and I did that the next day. So it was about a half day's worth of work. Now normally, guys, when I'm out here working or doing my tour, I actually have uh, a really cool thing that I've been doing for the last few months and I wanted to share it with you guys because I'm really excited because Audible has actually joined forces with Camp Kennan and I wanted to get the word out about the amazing things that this little program can do, this app can do, and the service can do for you. Now if you don't know what Audible is, it's actually a great way for you to get books and listen to them on your smartphone or however you want to you know consume that so basically you guys know we're all about education here when i'm working i like to stay educated right now i'm listening to a great book by graham hancock and it's called before america it actually talks about 
It kind of goes against the general line of thinking with archaeologists. They thought the Clovis were the original people here in the Americas, the oldest civilization, but we're finding out that that's just not the case. Some scientists are making a really good case that there were peoples here some 13,000 years before human beings were thought to be in North America. And more importantly, they had very complex civilizations. So it's a really fantastic thing. Audible.com slash Camp Cannon for your, what is it? It's a 30-day well, trial. Actually, if you go to audible.com right? slash Camp Cannon, you can get a free 30-day trial. That's right. If you go to audible slash Camp Cannon, you can get a free 30-day trial. You're going to want to check that out. And you can also text 500-500, but text Camp Cannon to 500-500 to get your free trial started. It's really a great way, like I said, to stay educated. You guys know I'm all about education here. I'm all about, you know, getting ourselves into the stratosphere as far as our mental fortitude. And it really helps me out. But you know what? Maybe you want to be entertained. They also have great books that you can actually listen to, like Game of Thrones. I also plop that on just to get refreshed for the new series that's on HBO right now. And man, it's a doozy. So it's a lot of fun. Once again, you got to go to audible.com slash Camp Cannon if you want to get your free 30-day trial or text Camp Cannon to 500-500. They have so many interesting things. In addition to a lot of uh, books that you may have heard from before, they also have originals uh, by famous authors. So you want to check that out too for some original content you can't get anywhere else but Audible. So I suggest you guys check that out immediately after this video if you guys want to keep abreast on some really interesting things you can learn about reptiles you can learn about science all kinds of great things available on audible so i, I think it's a good idea just to always keep improving yourself and you never have the time you know I usually don't have the time to exactly, always sit dude, down and read something that's you know? exactly right i like to have my headphones in usually i walk around i do work and i learn at the same time so it's definitely something if you're passionate about learning you want to check it out so we're offering you this free opportunity to try them out for 30 days if you go to audible.com slash camp cannon or text Camp Cannon to 500-500. All right, so here we are back again. Uh, and you know, the thing is guys, as I was mentioning, I'm really thinking I want to switch things up. So I've got this whole enclosure, right? Now, I'm not sure what species I want to put in. I'm kind of kicking around the idea of moving the radiated tortoises to this area. The high front yard? To the front yard. What do you think? I mean, I like it. Well, here's, here's why I like it. Let me give you guys my case and you guys tell me yay or nay. Step over here, Tom. So we've got the water features, right? Um, we've got these water features and they can drink from them. Uh, I feel very confident that they're not going to fall in them. Uh, even if they did go in them, I know they can climb out. Why I'm leaning towards this is the practicality. Number one, I keep the radiated closer. They move around and they also eat a lot of grass. So I've got all this grass here. And with this entire area, it's definitely gonna keep them, you know, it's gonna cut down on me having to feed. What, you well, got a question? I'm, just, I'm sorry, you know. Uh, he's, thinking, he's, he's going I, like this well, in the you back. Know, my here. question I think is what a lot of people, a lot of people remember you had the Chinese box turtles out here. I did. Are there no, there's nobody out here now? Nobody, nobody. out here right now because the, the enclosure wasn't completely sealed off. And I'm not gonna do the Chinese box turtles anymore because you know what guys, the reality is, I want to make sure I get all those offspring. They're an endangered species, and the box turtles are way more cryptic than the radiated tortoises when it comes to laying their eggs. So they'll lay their eggs, the box turtles, in really obscure places that I can't always find. I'm concerned that if they do have babies, birds will pick the babies off. That's very important to me. I want to make sure they're protected and I don't lose any of those babies. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think people are going to be freaking out. So you're saying you're not going to keep Chinese box turtles? I, I am. Oh, I'm keeping them. Keep them I'm just oh, not I thought you meant you were here. done with keeping no. them. Gonna, no, I, I like, just want to keep them. Yeah, all right. I'm going to probably keep them in with Guapo and Lola because it's completely uh, okay. sealed. Got it, got and it. if they lay eggs, the eggs are going to be fine. And if I miss an egg and the babies hatch, well, guess what? Now I'm able to really, you know, the babies will be safe because nothing's going to get in there. Whereas with the radiated tortoise, um, I can find the eggs very easily with my little egg poking technique. Usually I'll see them laying eggs, which is important. I have all this grass, but furthermore, I also have the cactus. These guys are going to prune the cactus down below. So basically what would happen is 
These tortoises are gonna manicure my lawn, they're gonna eat all the weeds out of the mulch, and they're gonna nibble on the low-hanging cactus. And it's a lot easier for me to just break a cactus off, throw it down for them. It's just an easier way for me to keep these animals in a safe area, someplace closer, with a food supply for them, which I think is gonna be helpful. So that's the first thing oh, I'm it's asking. It's a beautiful habitat, so it's, I mean, you know. You know, and don't forget, we're also gonna be putting another aquascape ecosystem on the right hand side of this in June. My right. good friend John Adams. To make the faux moat. The faux moat, dude, that's right. You've, <laughs> that's true. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could connect the back pond to the front pond and have a lazy <laughs> river that I just sat around in, but we don't have enough money. But if we get over a million viewers, I promise you, all my money is going into habitat for animals. Not buying a bunch of animals. You know I don't do that, guys. I create habitat and the animals come to me. Trust me, you don't want to get overloaded, you want to get overloaded in habitat. So I'm moving things around because I have these grand visions for Camp Kennedy. So there'll be the stream, it'll flow into this, it'll be yet another water source for the tortoises to drink from. I will also put a few species of aquatic turtle in here as well because they can, they can use this pond, they can use that pond, they'll walk back and forth. The other reason I kind of like doing the radiateds in here is because I really feel like it'll be like I've got the African cichlids, They're, the radiates are from Madagascar, it's kind of the same area of the world, so I think that's pretty cool. All right, so we started with the radiateds, yeah. now what will go back where the radiateds right. were? Right, that's a great, <laughs> great, great question. So, whew, I'm really stressed out. I gotta figure this all out. I've just, I took away that ugly eyesore of a, of a hide box here, you see? I took it away. I don't know if you guys remember it, it was just this ugly brown thing that Darwin could go in because they wouldn't all fit in there comfortably. So I took it out and I got to thinking, I'm like, you know, this enclosure is great. I mean, it's marvelous. But um, I think I might want to do something different for the Galops and Aldabra. And I may, may, either move them over to where the radiateds were and open up the area so they could walk back along the pond, create some different habitat is that there. that safe for them? Yes, it is actually safe because they're so big and the pond is so sloped, they can easily walk into the pond to drink if they wanted to. That's one thought. The other thought is I take the sulcatas from the back, which already has that big barn, that would already fit giant tortoises like the like the uh, Aldabra and Galop and stuff, and the three the two Galops and the Aldabras maybe move them there, and then build out the crocodile enclosures and let them kind of roam that area. I got a lot to think about, man. I, it's I, nuts. I have to I have to interrupt again. Yeah, I go apologize. ahead. Go ahead, interrupt. All right. Anyone who's been watching from the beginning knows that this was our very first video. Yes. This bowl creation was specifically designed for the Galops right. and the Aldabra so that they could get exercise, use those hind legs, and climb up it. So, I'm just saying. Like, that's, Well, no. You know. I'm actually going to create... You don't think I would create some kind of topography for those animals? Are you kidding me? We now have a great source for rock. So, I would create really cool... Uh, landscaped boulders and things that they could walk up on. I even want to create a plateau that they have to climb up in order to eat. I would feed them on a plateau so they'd have to climb up if they want to get their food from like whether it's their Missouri or some of the produce I feed them. Uh, so I would definitely landscape it to their to the animals needs and I that would be a fun. The only thing we're really learning in this episode is that you're a masochist. Like uh, you're just yeah. creating like giant uh, jobs for yourself. I know but you know, here's the thing, guys. Like, I really w It's funny. Like, I've done this much in the last 14 years. But we've got some great partners that are helping us out now. Um, and those partners, you know, they're able to help me with materials, machinery, things like that. And that's what I'm going to need to really get this job done. By the way, let's have a look at that. Remember, this is what I do every night. I come out here, I daydream, I talk to myself. It just so happens you guys are watching me and you're helping me. So here's Darwin. Um, here she is, good girl, I love her. And again, guys, I love coming out here and just making sure the animals are okay. Just kind of giving them a visual, a once over. Uh, let's give her a little scratch on her neck. She's such a good girl, man. I've just fallen in love with this animal. I've only had her now for about four or five years and uh, she is a permanent resident of the camp. 
I just love the fact that this animal, when she first came, she had some of the swelling and edema, they call it, on the base of her neck. And usually those animals are getting it because they're overweight, they don't have enough exercise. But as you can see, look at how perfect she is. Yeah, this perfect. is what you want when you're keeping a Galapagos tortoise in captivity. I mean, so many people wonder why do they get that swelling? I just think that they overfeed their animals and they don't give them enough exercise. So rest assured, if I do move these tortoises, you can be sure I'm gonna build a heck of a cool enclosure for them. You don't worry about that. And they'll have a lot of space. It's just a matter of kind of utilizing what I already have more efficiently, okay? I can fit the sulcatas into maybe this area, okay, with a smaller, a smaller house. They don't need the giant house, whereas these guys are only getting bigger. You know, uh, Nostradamus and Socrates are gonna be huge. And rather than have to build a whole new shelter in my front yard, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, um, I can use one that's already built and kind of move them over there. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. Hey guys, these are just ideas, all right? I can't wait to see. People I think are gonna freak out, but I don't I know if so. it's gonna be good or bad or I both. Know. I'm not I, sure. I really don't know, but I'm gonna be reading those comments. But you know what guys? It's like sometimes change is necessary to do things. Like for example, I have this whole area. Right now Hercules is the only tortoise in it. So I've gotta figure out how to utilize my space more efficiently. Hercules is back in here. As you guys know, I, I put them together, but they didn't really get along well, and that was kind of a bummer, and I didn't want to stress Hercules out because that's when the animals start getting sick, is if they're always getting bullied by the other ones uh, during the winter, you don't want them to get sick. Winter's over, now he's out here, he's nice and safe, he's got a large area, he gets nice, to, he feeds, he eats some of the clover, he's eating some of the leaves that fall down. You know what I'm realizing is I can't believe how much like empty space there is right That's now. That's what I'm saying. I got to change a lot already. Like all this used to be utilized. I know, I know, but I, I, and it's going to be utilized again. But now with the addition of crocodilians, I got to make sure. But look at the size of this pen. This I is know. huge. It's huge. I could even do crazy things, man. I don't hardly ever use that gate. I could put a gate here and a gate there and a gate here. Okay. <laughs> and and when I need the access for it, I just shut those two gates. Okay. So it would connect the whole front. So I could shut those two gates, let a vehicle pass through if we have deliveries of something, and then shut it, shut this gate, and then allow the, the animals to kind of move back and forth between all of this. It's just huge. There's a lot of potential still for my property, a lot of untapped space, because I don't overcrowd the animals, okay? That's the plan. Now these guys, I don't know. Do you can put a crock up here too. Um. No. Yeah. All right, go back. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sidetrack you. No, you're not sidetracking me. I actually thought that I could put, I could make, I could actually make some kind of uh, pond here and then have a crocodile in here. I've got electricity. I can get the water out there. I mean, it's the sky's the limit. There's a lot that I can do. Um, you just have to go into the parameters that Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission uh, has set in place. But yeah, like, I don't know, do I take the red, do I take these red foots, put them over there and just use half of this area? It's so it's daunting. I don't know what to do, guys. It's a lot of work, but I promise you, it's gonna be amazing once I figure it all out. All so, right, so like, take these red foots example. Like, let me ask you this, all this change, I, I mean, turtles and tortoises. They like consistency, yeah. right. Right? They so like consistency. Are you worried about messing with well, the healthy, only, happy, breeding tortoises? There is that. There is definitely, I run the risk of knocking them off for a season or two. Um, but I'm not really a breeder. You know, I breed them, they do their thing, I collect the eggs. But I think, you know, overall, in the course of an animal whose life is upwards of 100 years, if they lived, you know, 10 years in this enclosure, and then wind up living the rest of their life in an even larger and more, you know, elaborate enclosure for them, well then that's better. And then it also gives me the opportunity to safely add more animals to that enclosure because it's bigger. Now originally, these guys lived all throughout here, okay? But um, again, the amount of animals I have, they didn't really need all that space and I could utilize this as well. So that's the thing I'm trying to figure out. Just like the amounts, the needs of the animals. <laughs> to be honest, I probably won't move these guys. They're just so bulletproof in and out of there, I think we'll keep them there. But some of it, like this is an empty space. Something needs to live here. 
Um, we're going to keep these guys as they are. It's Who's mostly, over there? That's still the elongated. Yeah, right? those are the elongated. So it's mostly guys. We're, we're talking about where the radiateds are currently. All the way on the other side. The galops and, and the, the sulcatas. Yeah. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I could move my sulcatas to here, which actually is better. And I'll tell you why it's better. It's drier up here. I had to bring soil in. That's why I locked them in, in that smaller well, enclosure. Because it gets too wet back there, well, then they can get problems. So if I move the sulcatas up here, that could be pretty good. And just build a barn. Build a barn for them up here. That so, seems like a no-brainer. That seems pretty good. You know, I think that's a good idea. Um, you know, it's, it's plenty of room for them. I can seed this, throw grass down. I think that would be pretty cool. Because as you guys know, Hercules is most likely going to go live with my friend Robert Arrington at some point. So Hercules is going to be moving down the road. So this will be an open enclosure. That's making the most sense. Kind of living out here, building a nice structure here. If I were to build a nice structure here, I could leave the red foot, I could tap into the electric there, and then have a nice, you know, shaded by the mango trees. The mangoes would drop fruit, and that'd be fine for the sulcatas every once in a while. They're only gonna get it when the trees fruit, so they're not gonna eat it all the time. That makes the most sense, is to get uh, the sulcatas up here, you know, which would be pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Wow, we're working things out. See, you guys are helping me and you haven't even mentioned anything in the comments yet. Let's move. Come on over here. This is uh, going to be quite, this is turning into Well, just think about uh, how much fun it's going to be. epic video and tour here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. You bored? You guys bored? I'm sorry. not bored. <laughs> All right. Here are my cherry heads. And again, remember, we're checking everyone out. Cherry heads are out and about. Oh, you know what? I can't let these little guys go unfed. That's the cool thing about having the buckets out here. Come on back over here, everyone. Come here. Check out how cool this is now. So check this out. So I got these little feeding stations, so let's just go hook some guys up. Little snacks. I just take a couple scoops of this for them, throw it all the way out there. Look at them all coming out from back there. We do four for them. All right, now, since I'm here with the elongateds, I just spread it out here and then the snippers get it. They have very, very good noses. And what's cool about the leaf litter down here is there's no sand that I worry about these guys ingesting. In fact, they just wind up kind of eating some dried leaves and stuff like that. So in a little while, look, see, look at this. All it takes is the smell of the food and they start waking up and then they start feeding. So it's really, really cool. And these guys I wouldn't move because this is the absolute perfect habitat for them. It's just really, really good. All right, let me, uh, Get some of these cherry heads some food. Look at these little guys waiting patiently. So I like to have them walk around and find all their food. So I'm going to place this stuff on top of this thing. All right. Come on, let's keep going. All right, Pinky and Marty, we got the rhino iguanas are good. I gotta make sure soon, I'm gonna have to be building new habitat for these uh, Lewis eye iguanas. These little guys are gonna start outgrowing this enclosure here in the next year. So I'm gonna have to make sure I do something different for them, all right. There's the Lewis eye, the blue iguana. And of course, here are the sulcatas. And that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know what? I want to use some different construction materials. As you guys know, I want to start building things out of more rock. We've got really cool stuff to do with rock. I want to tear down these old dilapidated fences, okay? And I want to start using rock walls. And so if I move the sulcatas, up to the front, I can even then have a free pen where the uh, galops were, but I can move the galops back here. Maybe do something different with this barn, just reface this. But they could have a pretty big spread. Just kind of change the topography. 
nice big spread here. We put our crocodilians out here. I mean, man, it could be really cool. So I don't know, that's what I'm thinking. There's a lot to do. It's a nutty video, I know, but it's somewhat of a tour. It's uh, somewhat of a, what do they call that? A uh, brainstorming session. And uh, I'm interested to see what you guys think on the comments below. Because remember, man, Camp Kennan exists for the animals, making their lives better. But we also have to take into consideration that it's evolving here. The camp's evolving. We have an opportunity to do some good for some smaller crocodilian species. And you guys know I love to do that stuff. You know that I'm all about taking care of these animals and providing a home for animals that need it. So uh, definitely be on the lookout because the crocs I get are going to be crocodilians that need homes. So it'll be really cool. So I don't know. The other thing is too, like all of you guys out there, I've always dreamt of having a backyard like this, my own little zoo that I can do good work from. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. That's what I'm working out in my brain and that's why I just started doing this video. <laughs> I hope you guys liked it, man. Anyhow, I'm gonna keep on wandering around. You guys are probably tired listening to me yap. We'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, thanks to our sponsor, Audible, for helping us out with this video. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. And look where the eyes are situated. This is an animal that spends a lot of its time in water.